Weird. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> no idea what's going on. <laughs> Uh, so this, uh, Irishman walks into a Canadian bar and the bartender says, well, you're a long way from home. What are you doing here? He says, well, back home, I was, you know, having a beer at my local pub and I turned over the, the, uh, bar coaster and it said, drink Canada dry. So I thought I'd give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that that's even more funny for me because I have a friend that loves drinking Canada Dry. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I tell him all the time. It's like, how 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 do you do that? You how, how do you go about drinking Canada Dry? <laughs> One can at a time. Uh, so <laughs> I hear the music playing. Let's let's get on with this show. Welcome to Barely Furcasting featuring Tabin. And this episode, that is 100% a lie. We have no Barely and no Tabin, just a raccoon and his special guest that all of you should recognize, that cheerful cheetah, the spotted wonder, Chitaro. How the fluff are you, my friend? I am fluffy well, by the way, and uh, Moo Bark Fluff to you. Thank you, thank you. Moo Bark Fluff, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm having an excellent day today for lots of different reasons, and uh, this this kind of puts uh, the icing on the cake, so to speak. Well, great. Yeah. So, so hopefully, so hopefully you're having a good day just as well, right? It it has been a day. Let me tell you, I have I nearly ran out of gas on the way home because there was a like a massive headwind with the weird weather we've been having. And I had calculated that I would have enough gas to get home from work and fill up at my local station. I was not going to make it. I had about five miles left on my tank when I pulled in at the Brooks Gervais exit uh, for the pilot there. And uh, that would not have gotten me home if I hadn't been able to stop there. Yeah, Well, well maybe so. next time you need to bring home a bag of Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> not that kind of gas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm talking the kind that goes in my car. Well, yeah, oh. that, that kind goes in my car too if I stop by Taco Bell. Right. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> so I guess that brings us to the past today, now that we are done with our welcome and introductions. So last week, as of this recording, Tabin, uh, you, and I were in Seattle at ANW6. And it was a really Yay. fun time. It was awesome. Yeah, even though it was a lot of work, uh, I helped Tabin with all of his panels, the film festival, which I got to host the red carpet interviews, and Chitaro helped me with that by getting me all the names of all the people walking down the carpet ahead of time because in fursuit, I cannot see who people are. Uh, they're just kind of big amorphous blobs to me and until they get really close. <laughs> so it was a big help. I really appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> right then i helped with dance comp backstage while tabin was emceeing and then we did story time and then tabin even competed in floor wars so it was oh. kind of a whirlwind of furry fun well how was your a &W? well you know it's interesting because the night before i was leaving i told myself okay i have a very early morning train to take up to a to seattle and uh -huh. it's like okay Go to bed at 9 p.m. Okay, well, I go to bed, <laughs> and then at 11 o'clock, I wake up. At 12 o'clock, I wake up. At 1 o'clock, yep. I wake up. 2 o'clock, I said, okay, screw it. I'm staying awake. <laughs> so I was awake <laughs> yeah. from 2 a.m. until the train, get on the train, do that. I, I was up until like 1, 1 a.m. that night, and it's like, uh, you know, volunteering uh, for a and w uh, for registration was kind of awesome got to meet a lot of cool furs uh, cool. but uh, but it, it was overall it was an awesome weekend and um, if any fur out there uh, had a chance to go to a and w um, we all know that we all had fun especially on Friday night right oh yes yes we had a we had a blast <laughs> on Friday night Friday was one of my busiest days because Tabin did Tabin sings word owl and mm -hmm. Tabin did uh before that we did uh 
I don't even remember now. Gosh, I know it was a busy day though. Uh, well, I was so, I was in reference to the fire alarm personally. Oh I'm well, then there was that too. Yes, there was that too. Oh my gosh, yes, there was yeah. that. I know everybody was trying to forget about that part, but you know. Yeah, I I kind of blacked that out because uh, it was it was not the greatest. I had just sat down at the bar to drink a very expensive whiskey sour. And of course the alarm went off. I, I finished my whiskey sour though, because I was not about to leave that kind of whiskey line, just lying around on the table. Uh, well, you know, hey, alcohol is meant to be drank, right? Right. Well, and I was halfway through it when the alarm went off. Anyways, the, bar the bartender was just like looking at me, hold on a second. He's like, it, it could be a false alarm. And so while he was like, hold on a second, it could be a false alarm. I just kept sipping and finished yeah. it kind of a little quicker than I really wanted to. But at least I had something warm in my belly for the, you know, hour or so that we had to spend out in the cold. Right. Well, you know, at, at first I, th I thought that it was a joke, to be honest, because we're sitting, uh, my partner and I are getting on the elevator to go up and visit yeah. a friend in his room. And all of a sudden there's flashy lights and, and. The, the elevator yeah. says fire and it's like, wait, who pushed the fire button? And it's like, yeah, down to the first and floor. It, yeah. yeah, it just shoots you down to the first floor. If, yeah, <laughs> if you were in the elevators, you were going down to the first floor no matter what. <laughs> Thank you for the fun ride, right? <laughs> yes. So, and then I DJed uh, Sunday night before the end of the uh, con. So I was like the second oh. to last DJ. I wish I could have seen you, but unfortunately my train left at five o'clock that evening. So I, yeah, I understand. Year, Next year, I'm going to plan on being there Sunday night so that I can see all the ending ceremonies and stuff because I feel like I missed it all. Yes. So, like, Taven taught me right last year, and he said, don't try to go back Sunday night. Wait until Monday morning and just go back in the morning. You know, it's one more night. You still get in the con room, right? So you might as well, you know, you might as well take advantage of it. And so I've did, done that the last two cons and it just makes it so much easier because you don't have to rush. You have time to pack up in the morning. You're not going out with the mass exodus of people that are trying to leave Sunday night. It's just way better, way more chill, way easier to get out. And it wouldn't have worked this year anyways, because I had the DJ at 10 to 11. So there was absolutely no way I was going to drive home after DJing and try and get all my gear in the car and then drive home. Uh, it just wouldn't have happened. Oh, well, my one of my roommates for this con was Pepper Coyote. I heard. How was that? <laughs> yeah. That that was kind of awesome, to be honest. Um, you know, it. Uh, I, I mean, personally, I, I I'm not going to say why I know of Pepper Coyote other than a couple of his <laughs> YouTube songs. <laughs> uh, there's but, some of there's some of his songs that uh, yeah that the people know for certain reasons and uh, yeah we'll just yeah. leave it at that because this is a PG thirteen uh, podcast a, 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 absolutely <laughs> if if you first want to go out there and search on YouTube do it at your own risk but you know, at your own but, risk definitely <laughs> yeah but he, but he was some, an awesome song, yeah yeah he's an awesome person and you know he he. Uh, he he's really a fun person and um getting yeah, to know he's him bad at, was fun he's bad at social media because he's been on yes. here twice to describe why he's bad at social media but <laughs> he is a really nice guy you know at heart he he just he often sticks his foot in his mouth when he gets on social media like a lot of us do uh, uh, so, yeah yeah pepper we love you but uh hire yourself a social media director right Th thanks right. for all your funness this weekend pepper if you're out there listening yes thank you pepper <laughs> uh, so so that was my past today and a little bit of yours is there anything else you want to say for your past today uh no no it was it was kind of, like i said on the on the train it was kind of fun um let me just say that on our way home you know my partner uh was wearing his fur head for a little while and there was this little oh, cool. kid who was right in front of us and she kept like interacting with us the whole entire time on the train and she just enjoyed it you know she she played nice. with my tail um, and and no that's not a bad euphemism no 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 he actually has a cheetah tail <laughs> yes i have a cheetah tail and and so it was kind of fun and um so yeah that that's my past today now i'm all cut up so here i am right excellent yes so that brings us to our omq which used to be obscure movie quotes but is now obscure media quotes because i was having trouble always trying to find just like three movies to do quotes from and i figured it would be much easier if i could choose like 
three different categories or you know i only had to choose one from each category so I, we've I changed it to media i know this game because a friend of mine yeah. and i used to play it long ago here here let me give you one of of the fun quotes that we used to do see if you can guess what movie this is from okay i'm batman Ooh, is it hmm is it is it bambi no but you're very okay. close well i mean <laughs> No, <laughs> that's a Taven answer. I mean, in in honor of him. Uh, yeah, gotta but, have uh, some of those I, answers, right? It's a good one. Yeah. So w- because I wasn't here last week, right? Barely did not read the answers from uh, last week's OMQ. So we're gonna do them this week, which is gonna throw us a little bit off. But who cares? We'll fix right. it later. Yeah, uh, it'll I all mean, catch up to itself, right? Eventually it does. Uh, you know, we, we we don't know what we're doing here. We're just a bunch of furry animals. So our movie quote for two weeks ago is, what makes a man a man? A friend of mine once wondered, is it in his origins? The way he comes to life? I don't think so. It's the choices he makes, not how he starts things, but how he decides to end them. Do you know which one, which movie that's from? It sounds like it should be from a Marvel superhero movie. Ooh, you're very close. It is a superhero movie. Um, hmm, hmm. Let, let me give you a hint. He's okay. very he's very red. He has a tail and a stone hand. Very red. Hmm. He's very a red. Tail. Yes. And, and a, a stone tail. hand. Yes. Ooh. Someone I would want to date? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, well, he's he's not bad in the movie. Both of the movies that are both of the actors that have portrayed him in the two in the two different movie franchises have been pretty, you know, oh, pretty good uh, looking at them. My brain is saying Hellraiser, but am I wrong? You're very close. It's Hellboy. Hellboy. Dang. See, I, yeah, this is yes, this is from the Ron Perlman version back in 2004, okay. and that was uh, Agent John Myers said that. Oh wow, I was so close. <laughs> You were, you were. Our, our music quote is, starting from here, let's make a promise. You and me, let's just be honest. We're going to run. Nothing can stop us. Even the night that falls all around us. Soon there will be laughter and voices beyond the clouds over the mountains. We'll run away on roads that are empty. Lights from the airfield shining upon you. It's so hard without the music and without it rhyming the way that, that they rhyme it. <laughs> You you did an excellent job. That's another reason I switched to doing like the music ones because it is hard. So, like even a song you really know, yeah. if it's not sung, it's really hard yeah. for your brain to get it. Yeah, for sure. I I I I do this thing where I actually read movie lyric or not movie but uh, song lyrics all the time, and it's kind of funny to be honest. But I can't guess that one. Yeah. Okay, that one is not gonna get us, which is. My beloved Ziggy's and my song. I played it for oh. him on stream once, and he was he was like, "I love that song." Awesome. Uh, so, yes, oh, that's adorable. Uh, so, yeah, not gonna get us is from the uh, Russian band Tattoo, and so that was that. And there the are plane, literature. The plane. Yes, not that kind of tattoo. It's oh, <laughs> little T, big A, big T, little U tattoo. Ah, all I know about them is they're Russian. Uh, oh. Other than that, I don't know. And the song is about about being gay and I guess running from maybe Russia. maybe if they're maybe if they're Russian, they need to slow down a bit. True, true. They could be slower. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Our literature quote is: "Each minute bursts in the burning room. The great globe reels in the solar fire, spinning the trivial and unique away. How things flash, how things flare. What am I now? What was I then?" May memory restore again and again the smallest color of the smallest day. Time is the school in which we learn. Time is the fire in which we burn. Hmm. That 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 sounds like something I should actually know. But uh, yeah, you'll feel really silly while you know it. So, are you a Star uh, Trek fan? Uh, yes. Okay. So, in the movie, was it Generations? Yeah, Generations. Oh yeah, yeah. This is something that uh, uh, Soren says uh, to uh, Patrick Stewart. Oh, to, to, to oh yeah. Time That's is when they were on that part. part of it. 
Yeah. Yeah. So this is it's it's from a poem called "Calmly We Walk Through This April's Day" by Delmar Schwartz. Oh, it's a very see, beautiful I, poem. I knew I understood this, and I've heard this before, but I did not. Yes. I cannot say I've read that book, to be honest. But I do remember the quote from Generations. It is a beautiful poem, and it's not it's not too many stanzas. It's it's actually a fairly short poem. Uh, this is like the last stanza of it. So really good if you get a chance look calmly look up calmly we walk through this april's day very good poem really nicely written i like the you know i like the way it flows it it, it sounds like it flows pretty good yes. like the water like the water that runs through the uh the river so to speak true <laughs> so that brings us to that's just stupid or news of the odd are you stupid or something stupid is stupid does sir good stories um there's been some animal hijinks going on all over the world it must be that time of year i, I guess so like all three of these stories uh, premiered on upi today oh wow so <laughs> pet goat was rescued from the roof of an arizona home an arizona fire department said it was a rooftop rodeo when firefighters were called to rescue a pet goat that found its way onto the roof of a home and became stranded the Glendale Fire Department said in a Facebook post that firefighters were called to lend a helping hoof when an adventurous goat ended up a little too high up on the home. They chased him around for a bit, and then they finally caught him, and he was reunited with his owner. Uh, so goats well, are, you know. are notorious for climbing, though. It doesn't surprise me he got up on the roof and then got stuck. I, I, I had pet goats when I was a kid, and yeah, they were constantly up on high things. And you're like, how did you get up there? But how, how did you have a pet goat if you, you can't be a kid because you're a raccoon? No, 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 there's, um, yeah. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> things, things happen. Uh, <laughs> so the Don't next worry. one is... What, what, whatever floats your goat, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, so the next one is from England. A meerkat escaped from a petting zoo in England. Officials with a petting zoo in England are warning the public about a meerkat on the loose in the area. Reddishvale Farm in Stockport near Manchester said the male meerkat escaped overnight and is believed to be wandering somewhere in the Reddish Valley County Park. The farm said that the, in a Facebook post that although meerkats are very friendly, they can bite if being threatened. Uh, so yeah, don't try to pick him up because he, he might bite you. And, um, I'm pretty sure that they have pretty pretty nasty chompers. They do. Uh, yes. So Jordan Beckwith, the farm's manager, said the meerkat escaped through a drain hole during maintenance work. We've been looking for him in the burrows, and we've had the meerkat barking sound on and put out food to try and entice him back. Beckwith told the BBC, he said the Africa native animal, one of three males living at the farm, might be on the hunt for a mate. They are big herd animals, and they like to have big groups and colonies, and there are usually a minimum of three in them. So hopefully this little guy makes it back to his to his home at the farm and doesn't get predated by some other animal. I mean, although in, in England, it would only be dogs, and I don't think a meerkat and a fox would be a good match either. I think they both could hold their own against each other. Absolutely. But uh, well, well, I mean, well, I think do... the only thing that would... Go ahead. The, well, you do know why? Uh, why? Why did the meerkat cross the road? Uh, to get to the other side. Well, no, to prove to the possum that it could be done. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, hopefully, this little guy gets home. I, I'm I'm pulling for him. I hope he doesn't get yeah. squished or 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 get chased by a dog or anything nasty uh, like I, that. I know. Yeah. Or 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 uh, doesn't get more lost. Or more lost, yes, because yeah. that's all, that's all they need is uh, some lo poor lost meerkat running all over England. Well, yeah, because because you know because you know what a lion calls a meerkat, right? A uh, uh, snack, fast food, fast food, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's back home here in Alabama, uh, back to the United States, and an emu escaped from an Alabama home for the third time. 
An emu named Esmeralda escaped from her Alabama home on the third time and was spotted running loose around town before returning home on her own. The city of Calera said in a Facebook post that Esmeralda reportedly had a domestic dispute involving her sister, resulting in Esmeralda making a swift exit from her owner's Jenison home. Sue Sanford, the owner of the emu, and her sister Ursula said Esmeralda is the friendlier bird of the pair, but also the more adventurous one. Esmeralda previously escaped a few years ago and became a local celebrity when she escaped for the second time back in December. I get a lot of comments now because she's very well known from December. So, of course, right right away people were saying, not again. Esmeralda's latest escape proved short-lived as she returned home on her own later in the day. We're happy to report that Esmeralda has returned to home and hopefully will reconcile her differences with her sister, the city said in an update to its Facebook post. After reflecting on her actions while she was on the run, she decided that she should remain with her sister in the flock together. So Aww. that is all of our news of the weird and stupid. Mostly it was just kind of weird because a lot of animals are escaping and getting into places they shouldn't be. Well, well, that last story was emutainment. Emutainment. Yes. Emutainment. Yes. Emutainment. Yeah. Wait, we had an emo emu. Right. <laughs> it's it's like why why did the emu bring a camera to the desert? I don't know. To capture some emusing snapshots. Oh. That's so bad. That's almost a Taven joke. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings us up to media. So last week, I was super busy at the con. However, just before heading out to a I did get a chance to watch the new Netflix movie, Rebel Moon. I thought it was pretty good. The effects were well done. The story was heavily borrowed from Star Wars and a little bit from The Seven Samurai. And overall, it was good, and I'm looking forward to the next chapter in the saga. Other than that, I really haven't gotten a chance to sit down and watch anything since a Well, you know, I did... Um... I did watch a few things. Um, a lot of things that I end up watching with my partner are horror movies, of course. And I, I oh, always yeah. say that ho- horror movies today are really not horror movies. They're hilarious is what they more are like, in my opinion. Yeah, there's <laughs> there, they, there's very few of them that I find scary anymore. Yeah, yeah. I don't they're, know if they're, that's just because... They're just not, I mean, everything's been done or they're just not making them as scary as they used to. I yeah. Just don't know. You know, there, there was this one, now mind you, it was, it was several months ago, but there was this one um, that if any furs out there like watching horror movies, you should look for this um, one called um, Cheerleaders in Chains. Huh. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's a strange movie that um, you, you swear you swear that you're watching um, a, a horror movie, but it's kind of like you're watching a horror movie being made, and you can't really tell the difference between the the movie itself and whether there is actually a uh, a horror movie happening uh, in, at the same time. It's it's really kind of strange and obnoxious, but it, you know it, it it's kind of a, a well. It's not really a B movie. I would call it more like a D movie. <laughs> right, right. But uh, but it was really interesting because it kept my attention and stuff like that. And and you know it was it was a twist on that that horror movie thing. And and you know watching some of these horror movies like the the newest Texas Chainsaw Massacre I, by the way is like hilarious because there's this one uh. scene where where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre guy goes inside of this party bus and he has his little chainsaw and all these people are dancing and vibing in there and they all turn around at the same time and and (laughs) they see his chainsaw and they go no i'm gonna cancel you (laughs) oh (laughs) jeez so so it's like yeah so so horror movies are like one of those things but you know we um my my most recent movie that we watched we watched um which is an oldie but a goodie uh, a jim carrey favorite uh uh bruce almighty oh yeah 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 smite me almighty smiter (laughs) uh yeah but other than that the only other movie i've watched is movies to review okay well we're we're gonna get to that in a little bit 
But yeah. first, we, it's time for that thing that Tabin does that neither of us is going to do because I know both of us spent a, a whole weekend at the con screaming at the top of our lungs at dances and stuff like that. So <laughs> neither of us needs to be doing that. So we're just going to say furries in the news. <laughs> This week's phrase in the news, we've got a bunch of interviews that Tabin and I did at a and This is a Barely Forecasting featuring Tabin special report. And hello. Hello. Here we are uh, doing a pup at the con um, at Anthem Northwest 2024. And here we are... Um, on Saturday, and we're just going around um, after the fursuit parade and talking to some other furs and people. And this fine young gentleman is? I'm Chris. This is Chris. Can you all say Chris? Chris. Okay, great. They did it. And uh, what do you think of Anthem Northwest? I think it's great. It's yeah. our second con. We came up from Oregon City, Oregon. And oh, nice. We've been having a really good time, except for me not having a voice. No, well, I think it sounds great. It has a nice rustic feel to it, there and that's, that's great. So you've been having a really good time. What has your part, favorite part been? Uh, so honestly, for me, it's been watching my stepdaughter, who's an artist and an oh. upcoming fursuit maker, oh, nice. watching her really lean into her art uh -huh. and watching her interact with the other fursuit makers, the other suitors. Oh, I bet. And uh, that's been really exciting for me. And then, of course, just seeing all the variety, the, the real intricate details of so much of the suiting. Yes, there, there's so much intricate and wonderful animals around, around these places. You're right. And... So that is very exciting. How old is your stepdaughter? She's 14. Okay, uh, nice, nice. Her artist name is Robbie. Robbie. Yeah, yeah. Is that R-O-B-B-I-E? R-O-B-B-Y. R-O-B-B-Y. Uh, night, night Shift Design Studios on night Instagram. She's pretty amazing. Okay, so she's, uh, she's already done some stuff and already into the making. Yeah, she's even done her first art commission already. Oh, that's so cool. So all you furs, what was that again? Where can we find this? Night Shift Design Studio on Instagram. On Instagram, okay, very cool. I'll have to check that out. So what else are you looking forward to uh, for the rest of the con? Honestly, at this point, as a dad, sleep. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I get that, that's why. I saw you first, we found Chris here sitting in, we're setting up for my story time, and um, we're in Andy's Hollow, which is a nice kind mm -hmm. of sleepy little um, dim lit place, and we found Chris here sitting, just reading, and, then, uh, and he looked pretty sleepy. But so uh, um, I do know we've got the first suit parade coming up here in just a few minutes. We do, so we do. That's going to be exciting. I hear they're going to come right by here. That's what I just heard, too. So that's very exciting, all you first. We get to have a front row seat. Um, this pup right here normally goes to the parade, but it's so close to story time that um, I decided not to this time. So any fur that's looking for a first suit parade video, this year and hoping to see me, you won't! Yay! Um, and so there's that. Anyway, well, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us today. Um, we'll look forward to looking at your stepdaughter's Instagram. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Thanks, Taven. Thank you. Bark, bark. Well, hello. We are back again <laughs> to talk to another fur. This is Pup at the Con. Um, and we found another. Her. That's so exciting and great. And what is your name? Hey, you can call me Miles. I will call you Miles, <laughs> and I won't even have to walk that far to get there because that would be Miles. And that was <laughs> stupid that I just said, but I did it. So, Miles, it. how is the con going for you? This con is amazing. I is love it? this place. I'm from the Midwest. I'm from oh. Nebraska. Oh, I, very so cool. this is my first time being in Washington in general. Oh, okay. Uh, love this place. The con is amazing. Mm -hmm. Love the atmosphere here. Having a good it time. Is. Yeah, good, great. Yeah, I've actually been to every single a and since um, the first one in 2017, I think it was. Oh and it's gosh. always a really great time. The, such a great atmosphere. And just like everything you're saying, it's just really great. So what do you do in Nebraska? Uh, I work for the Department of Homeland Security. Not that oh, fun. Oh, watch out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a naughty pup. I'm a naughty pup. Oh, no, that's Nebraska. This is Oregon. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Or Washington. Where are we? I don't even know. <laughs> I... 
That's right. Nebraska. This is Venezuela we're in. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Nice, nice. What do you like working for um, the Department of Homeland Security? Uh, they don't know anything, so it's okay. It's okay. It's, uh -huh. it's so cool. It pays the bills. I bet, I bet. Which means <laughs> that um, you can have lots of ducks over for dinner because it yes. pays the bills. Absolutely. That was dumb, too. Just take note of that. Um, Great, so your con is great. What's your favorite part been so far? Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't know. I love all the activities here. I love this huge box fort that everyone has been coloring on. It is yeah, so yeah. absolutely wonderful. There's a bouncy castle. There's a bouncy. I've never been to a con with a bouncy castle. That's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> if you happen to, so I guess plug, yes. um, if you happen to be in Stateside, Oregon uh, next month, there is, um, Get Out the Float is a fur con, but it's a squeaky one, which means we have like five bouncy castles. Oh my God! And literally, we, w we went um, the last year, I think. And um, <laughs> like there's bouncy castles, like it's just amazing. It's lots of fun. That's so cool. Yeah, so if you can make it from Nebraska out to Seaside, Oregon oh, um, next yeah. month, that'd be great. I, um, I don't want to leave. Gosh, I know. It is so cool. I know. <laughs> it, it's like you're a tree in the summer. You don't want to leave. Stupid. We, I did it. I did it. I you did, did it. it, and it was good. High five. Hi, pa. Hi, pa. So tell us about your persona. Uh, this is Miles. He's my Smilodon uh, tiger mix, and he is my sweet little boy. I've, I spent five years saving up for this suit, and I love him Very so much. Very awesome. Where, where do you come from? Uh, Multicolor Bark is his maker. Okay, cool. Very, very cool. <laughs> and what is? what are you looking forward to for the rest of the weekend? Oh, I'm looking forward to just... The raves, the food. Yep. I'm looking forward to just Everything. seeing more people. Yeah. Yes. Hanging out, good. And seeing well, cool people like you. Oh yay! Uh, this, <laughs> Give me so on. um, I'll put this on audio. I'm hugging Miles now, <laughs> just so that you know, because that's important. <laughs> that's an important part important. of the thing here. Very important. Great. Well, we won't keep keep you from all your other fun. Thank you for taking your time <laughs> to talk with us on. Um, up on the con. <laughs> Thank you, man. You have a good rest of your con. Thank you very much. You're Will so do. sweet. <laughs> Thank you. I tried. Well, hi there. I here I am again, Tabin. At an A and W. Hello. Hello. Um, and here we are at A and W six. So 2024. It's been really great. And this is um, Pup at the Con. And here I am talking to Retro. Retro! The coyote. The coyote. I was just going to say what. So you're a coyote. So where, what made you realize that you are a coyote? A coyote. Well, I guess coyote, uh, where I originally grew up, we had quite a few coyotes around. I would hear them howl. And oh. I don't know. I just got my inspiration from that and had them as a character ever since. They're your, they're your inspiration, so that just makes sense. That's really great. Yeah. So uh, have you been to a w before? No, this is my first one. Oh, and how is it? It's great. I, I really love how organized it is. It's very family friendly. Yeah, 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 I've yeah. been to a few others that are a bit more wild. Yeah. So it, what, what other ones have you been to? Um, I've been to BLFC. That one's definitely a place to go to party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one is great, especially for a, like somebody who's a first time con attendee oh this is a great it's amazing con. it's yeah. great and i love how many parents and children there are here it's great it's a, to just uh and lots have of a great, safe place to be yeah lots of great camaraderie you see every first hugging because we all love each other and all that yeah. good stuff. And it's beautiful wonderful so um the weekend's been great for you obviously what have been your favorite or favorite things that have happened or you've gone to so my favorite overall is probably the dance competition. Yeah. Um, I was there yesterday and yeah. I was just blown away, especially just people in fursuits, like the whole entire suits. It, it takes a lot of energy out of you to do something like that, especially wearing a big carpet, yes. you know, all day. <laughs> um, this pup has done that, so yeah, I can attest, you are correct. Yeah. This is a very true thing. Uh, yeah, we had lots of, as you saw, we had lots of great talent this year. And it was just a great, amazing thing. Yeah, and so definitely. you're you're at the end of the night, you're finishing it off, you're waiting for closing ceremonies, and then 
Are you, uh, do you go home tonight or are you going home tomorrow? I'm going home tomorrow, first thing tomorrow morning. I found that it's um, uh, waiting to go home the day after the con is actually best. That yeah, definitely, because I bet people are like scrambling tonight yeah. just to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, and, and why, how about if we take some time to like get out of here and that kind of thing, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I will say yeah. this, definitely if you're going to a con, uh, booking a hotel room like a day before is the way to go because I was able to find a parking spot no problem. <laughs> oh, hey, where's the advice right here? You heard it, it. Yeah, it was super easy, no trouble. Yeah. Um, but it's like the day of. Oh, you're gonna have issues. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Especially yeah. on like a Saturday. Don't oh, don't my come on Saturday. Can yeah, you imagine? it was yeah. crazy yesterday. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for taking time um, to talk to us. Yeah, and I course, hope you have a good rest of your day and trip home. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. a pleasure meeting you. You too. <laughs> hey, victim friends. Yeah. Victim. Well, hi there. Here we are again. Hello. At, uh, hello. <laughs> hello. Here we are at NW um, 2024. Pup at the con once again. Here I am talking to... Katten. Uh, Katten. Yep. So it's like you're not quite a dozen of kitties because you're cat 10. Exactly. That was stupid, but I get it. So how's the con been for you? It's been really nice. Yeah. It's been really mellow. Like, it's not a hectic con. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's I haven't felt like I've been rushed to do anything. Yeah. Um, Oh, it's just been really fun. You can just kind of do what you want and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it might be busy, as you say, but you can do what you want, and yeah. it's great. What has been your favorite or some of your favorite things that have happened to you this time? Or you've gone to or something? Uh, all of the dances. Yeah. Um, Thursday, no, Friday night. <laughs> um, I went really hard. They were um. really good dances on Friday <laughs> night. I agree. They were good. They were good. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's probably been my favorite. And then... I just kind of hung out in the back of the dance yesterday. It was still super fun to watch everybody dance, everybody cheering each other on. Yeah. Burr, just... burr, burr, burr. <laughs> and we're chanting now, apparently, but there it is. We're here waiting for closing ceremonies that are for out there, so that's why there's... I don't know what's even happening, but there it is. So I'm going to wait for them to finish that. Okay, <laughs> and so um, you think you'll be at NW next year? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, nice. I think this is my third one. Awesome. But So how, what cons have you been to before? Um, honestly, just like this and Ferlandia. Ferlandia this last year, right. We met yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for taking your time to talk to us today on Pup at the Con. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. See ya. Yeah. Hi. Hi. How are you? I, I'm good. And how are you today? Tired. That dance battle was a lot of work. It was. So um, here we are at um, NW. This is another pup at the con, NW 2024. And we're talking to... Yule the Reindeer. Yule the Reindeer. And yes, they just referred to the dance battle. Which So if, if any of you know or don't know, Yule the Reindeer is one of our very few tap dancer furs in the fandom yep. that I know of. And um, they've been at uh, NW Dance Comps for as long as I can remember. And maybe for Landia or? No, not at Ferlandia. Okay. Uh, this was, I believe, my third A&W Dance Comp. Okay, okay. So A&W, been seeing them. And um, amazing work. This year's uh, dance competition Thank you. Um, was amazing, very epic. As I told you before, um, it's like a level above last year. Last it's year probably the fastest song I've ever tapped to. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, the, the dance battle, um, I, and I leaned over to my hubby and said, yeah. like, tap dancing to this music, how can you even? I mean, it, is, it is a very difficult song selection to tap dance to. It, it really, it really is. Uh, yeah, all you first, if you get a chance to check out Yule Reindeer um, on YouTube or something, it's pretty, uh, pretty unique dancing, yep. I must admit, I must admit. So I, how's NW been for you? It's been Pretty good, very busy. Yes. I hosted three panels this year. Three, yeah, nice. So I've been running around all con. I hosted an introduction to tap dancing panel. That makes uh, a yeah, lot of sense. That was well attended. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm really good. What were the other two? Uh, I also gave a panel on transformation and I hosted the Hoofer meet and greet. Very cool, very cool. 
Um, do you normally host these things, or is this the first time you've done that? No, this is the first time I've hosted panels at a convention. Cool. And, and it went, they went well, it sounds like. They all like, went really well, like yeah. Going to do it again next year? Yes. I already know what I'm going to do next year. So so all you first, if you come to ANW next year, you can learn about these wonderful, amazing things. And so now we're hanging out um, at uh, closing, closing ceremonies. ceremonies. Yeah. That's great. Oh, and so what have your four favorite parts of the con been for you so far? Um, honestly, the dance competition was really great. Uh, I was really happy to have a chance to perform that number. Yes. Uh, and the dance battle was really exciting. This is my first time doing the dance battle at a con. And you made it into the second round. I know, after a tiebreaker, which was exhausting. It was, yes. I, this is, I understand completely. It, it was <laughs> definitely a lot. so cool. Very, very cool. Well, uh, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us today. Yeah, thank you for uh, coming over and talking to me. No problem. Um, you have a good rest of your night, and we'll talk to you next time. All right, yeah, see you next year at A&W. Okay. Park. Well, hello once again, Pup at the Con A&W 2024. So exciting, waiting here in line for closing ceremonies. Here I am with the famous, magnificent, amazing Mr. Ari Rin. How are you on this fine evening? I'm good. It's the last day, so kind of tired. <laughs> Ready to go food. home. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how's the con been for you? We'll go home tomorrow. That'll be a good time. <laughs> yes. 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 How's the con been for you? It's been great. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You very busy. Very busy. And very, so you uh, ran the dance battles and organized the dance battles and the dance competition this year, like every year. Yep. And how did those go? Uh, people tell me that they loved it, so <laughs> assuming that it, it went well. So a lot of times there's stuff behind the scenes that nobody knows about. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, uh, the yeah. idea. <laughs> and now is where we are woo, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. But yeah. Good, great, great. So what else if, have if you the been... audience isn't too aware of that stuff. No, then, no, no. I mean, it's a success. But you know, you do a really great job of like, hiding it like i don't yeah, think a yeah, lot of people do six. know or realize that it happened and that's i think with any big organized event there's going to be that stuff but it's about Most hiding importantly, it. the dancers all said that they really had a great time oh good that's good that's great trying to build a you know supportive community yeah 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 in that oh, art yeah. here <laughs> and uh, and so many great dancers and, and the battles today lots of good battles and, yeah. and lots of good stuff too so New what people. else have you done this this con uh, <laughs> now it, well, I mean, like every time I spend my nights at the dance, so. Yes, yes. That's, the dance that's what I great. do most of, that's what I spend most of my consecutive hours here. Um, our, well, oh, so you might know then our very own Rain Raccoon here will be do, DJing at 10, uh, um, with 80s and 90s music. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? Yeah. So will we see you there? Possibly. Possibly. I'll be there for the very end for sure, but I, it depends on what I've got going on right before. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're so busy. Well, <laughs> you're so busy that I'm going to leave you alone, okay. believe it or not. Um, is there any wise words of wisdom you want to say to our, wisdom, to our listeners? <laughs> oh, put me on the spot. Yeah, that's know. what I do. You know, <laughs> you know that about me. <laughs> nope. Just nope. have a great time. If you come to a convention, enjoy yourself, make friends. Hug people. Hug people. It's very important. Re-energize. Because, you know, the rest of the, the year is kind of day in, day out. <laughs> this is our special time. It is. It is very... The truer words have not been spoken. This is our special time. We are the fur. We're a wonderful family. We love... We're, we're great. We help each other out. We're so supportive. Let's take advantage of this time we have together until the next time we see each other. Right? Yeah. That's right. For sure. <laughs> so on that note, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. We now return you to our regularly scheduled program. Okay. So that was uh, Tabin and me at the con doing some uh, pup at the con interviews. And thank you, Tabin, for all your help doing those. Uh, so that brings us to our upcoming events. Yay. Uh, so the weekend that this drops will be um, January 20th. So there's really, there's a con going on that weekend at A&E. 
but mm -hmm. uh, it will be over most halfway over by the time most people hear this. So we're going to start in February. In February, there is a lot going on. Uh, in fact, they did not list get out the float in this upcoming <gasps> event. Shame. But that is what is that February second through the fourth. Second through the fourth. Yep. So that yeah. will be February second through the fourth in beautiful Seaside, Oregon, at the Seaside Convention Center. Also happening that weekend, the first through the fourth is Anthro Expo in Norman, Oklahoma. Then we have February 21st through the 25th, Nordic FuzzCon in Malmo, Sweden. You know, speaking speaking of Sweden, there was actually somebody from Sweden at A and W. Oh wow, that yeah, is and I only cool. yeah I heard and I, I heard somebody came all the way from Australia too. Yeah, I only know that because their driver's license, because they had to show their driver's license for registration. Oh yeah, was, yeah, was pink. It was awesome. Oh wow, yeah, Sweden is an awesome country. I enjoyed mm -hmm. the heck out of being there. So then February 22nd through the 25th is First Squared 2024, and that is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, Gdakon in February 28th through the March 3rd in Gdansk, Poland. Then this is one that Tabin will be at, I'm thinking. Uh, right. I'm pretty sure he is. And that's March 7th through the 10th it is Vancouver 2024 in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. Then March 8th through the 10th, we have Furthermore 2024, and that's in Arlington, Virginia. We have Texas Furry Fiesta 2024, March 14th through the 17th at Dallas, Texas. We have Fernal Equinox 2024, March 15th through the 17th, and that's in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We have Gateway Fur Meet 2024, which is March 15th through the 17th in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, close to where my parents live. Are you going to go uh, to that have... one? Uh, no, no. Oh, because then I'd have to visit my parents. <laughs> oh, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it's 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 in St. Louis. They live closer to Springfield, so it would be a whole hmm. long trek to get up there. We have Las Vegas FurCon. 2024, March 29th through the 31st in, of course, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. We do have a cancellation. The Soda City Fur Con 2024 has been canceled in Columbia, South Carolina. Columbia, yeah. South Carolina. Soda City. Somebody didn't drink enough soda for that one. Apparently they didn't. Or the somebody left the caps open and all the fizz went out. There, there we go. Then we have Fantastic. 2024, March 29th through April 2nd, and that is in Bron, France. Woo. And that would be yes. a fun one to go to. Oh, yeah. I, I would love to go to European Fur Con. I am just short of money and uh, time yeah. off to be able to do that. Well, well I heard from a couple <laughs> of furs that were from Europe this weekend that some of the fur cons in Europe are really breathtaking so to speak so yes um, yes i've heard some i've heard some good things about uh several that that i kind of want to go check out if i ever get the money and time to travel again yeah for sure for sure for sure so that brings us to a movie review you have a movie review for oh. this for us this week right i do as a matter of fact and it is a lovely little ditty to be honest um it, it's a movie that is currently uh, streaming on Netflix. Um, it was a movie okay. from 2018. 2018 called Duck, Duck, Goose. Oh, I used to play that when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I guess. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I, I, I definitely played that a lot when I was a, when I was a kid myself, too. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a fun game. I just like chasing the ducks. <laughs> yeah, kids these days don't understand. We didn't right. have video games. We had to play. We had to make up our own games. We had to play. A lot of our games we made up were really dangerous. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> dodgeball. I, I know, right? The, the fun times in our lives, right? Before, yes. Before computers were a thing. And, right. And, 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 and tag. this type of stuff. Yeah. Tag, <laughs> you're it. Tag, you're it. Goes, yeah, tag often turned into a tackle game. Uh, if you right. were playing with with certain friends, uh, yeah, that, that, that reminds me of when kid. I was 
when I was like two years old, I ran through a plate glass uh, sliding window because we were playing tag. And, oh, uh, yeah. Believe it or not, I, I, I did not see it closed. I did not get hurt. The only thing that happened was my bangs got trimmed. The end. Oh. But, uh, but yeah. yeah so. so no marks on this cheat. Great. But back to my movie review, you know, the, the Duck Duck We digress. Movie, uh, <laughs> it's absolutely a fun little movie. Um, it, it, uh, it starts out with these ducks in formation flying, uh -huh. and they're flying onto a lake because they're getting ready to land, of course. And then all of a sudden, this goose just happens to like fly and swoosh by, by them. And then this goose ends up flying around and ends up in formation with some other geese. Uh -huh. And the main goose is explaining to all of these geese um, while b before he comes about you know, being safe in formation and all these things. And, um, and of course, <laughs> the, 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 goose, uh, uh, the goose flying around comes in and, and it's like, all of a sudden, it's like, and this goose's name is Peng, uh, by the way. Um, okay. th this, uh, and he, he ends up coming in late. Well, um, so then after, after a moment, uh, Peng starts, uh, well, the main go uh, goose says, is there any questions? And Peng says, yeah, I have a question. Why do all of us fly in a V formation? <laughs> Can, can't we fly in a different type of formation? So all these other geese in this V formation start saying things and says, yeah, yeah. How come we don't fly in a W? <laughs> <laughs> or, or how about an A? <laughs> Let's make an A. <laughs> and so the, then, then they start to fly, and then one more person says, "Wait, wait! How about we do a hashtag?" Hashtag. <laughs> 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 <You know? laughs> oh, yeah. <no. laughs> and of course, then they all fly off. And so yeah. And and this is just the first part of the movie, mind you. There's all sorts of fun little ditties in this movie. Um. So. So then it kind of, the scene changes and, and you see this duck that is trying to catch a worm because this one duck, his name is, is Chow. Uh -huh. He's trying, he's trying to catch a worm because he's always hungry. And, um, and his sister, her name is Chi, not Chi like cheetah, but Chi is in C-H-I. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that would be she, weird. It, it would be a little weird, um, but yeah. his sister says, "Okay, come on, we need to keep up with the others because there's a whole slew of these uh, of these ducks that are being walked by a human, and they're supposed to go to the promised land, so to speak, or, or assume they right. at least they assume that's where they're going." Well, so while those ducks are doing that, then it fades over to another uh, another scene where a female goose, her name is Jin Jing. If this is not sounding familiar, this is a a Chinese movie uh, that's done for oh, okay. the American audience. Yeah, hence all of the Chinese names. So Jin Jin. Well, that makes sense. She, yeah, yeah. She's leading this formation when Peng uh, comes up uh, underneath her and challenges her to a race. And uh, and see, the thing about Peng is he likes to be a show off. And so he, he starts doing this stuff and uh, about flying and stuff. And all of a sudden, he ends up falling to the ground gracefully, I will say. And he ends up taking out a good swath of all those ducklings that were walking along the road and takes, takes them out and goes into the lake and, and takes out a couple of, of other, um, you know, geese and other things like that. Well, the elder goose is really mad at, at Peng, of course. And, and tells him, okay, you need to start acting uh, like you're part of this flock or you need to, uh, <laughs> although this is my line, not his, he needs to get the flock out. Ha 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 ha. And so, so, so he basically tells Peng, he says, okay, you're gonna have to lead the younglings into formation. And he goes, oh, I, you know, I, I could fly by myself and get there faster than you guys. And he says, no, 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 you have to be part of this group. So, so basically, you know, the elder says, no, no, you have to do this. He says, okay, fine. Well, Peng goes walking off, and what does he do? He ends up falling asleep while the flock ends up flying away. Oh, no. So now we go back to these two these two ducks because these two ducks are somehow have have gotten lost from their the rest of the ducks somehow uh -huh. and they were in this um, little uh, storm drain uh, thing 
and and it's interesting because a cat ends up finding them and this cat is kind of unusual because it's kind of a cat that's a dual personality cat it has okay. it has yeah one eye that's yellow and one eye that's red and its yellow hey, eye is Romeo. kind of like yeah it's kind of like the yellow eyed cat is the good cat and the red eyed cat is the evil cat you know oh no and i so, have an evil yeah. cat yeah yeah does it have he's red and red and yellow eyes no he's just got green eyes like a normal cat but he's he's evil <laughs> Uh, half cats are evil. He belongs oh. to the pugs, though. <laughs> That's awesome. He's not so, my cat. So this cat uh, ends up starting to chase after these two ducks. Well, Peng ends up uh, getting involved and helps to scare the cat away. And he, he ends up making the cat trip on a turtle. <laughs> okay. That ends up backflipping into the water and then he ends up getting onto a log and tries to get up on the log and all of a sudden a big gigantic fish comes and eats the cat oh my gosh and of course the turtle I did not see that one coming <laughs> the turtle says the turtle says oh that must have been a catfish <laughs> but I'm just <laughs> right so then Peng says okay well I'm gonna go back to sleep and he, he goes back to sleep. And when he wakes up the next morning, these two ducks, you know, Chi and Chow, are, are now with him. And they try to say, hey, can you take care of us? Because you're you're the, the bonehead that ended up, like, making us get lost from our, our, uh, our, our flock. So you need right. to help us get to where we need to go. And, of course... Seems only fair. Yeah, well, well Peng at first says... T says basically no i'm not going to help you but then he starts realizing wait a minute i need to do this on my own you know and so he starts walking walking away and and he starts to fly and then something happens and he runs into a big gigantic gong that's on ropes and the gong he, he runs into that he falls down the gong ends up falling off the ropes and then rolling right over his wing oh no yeah, so it kind of like breaks his wing, so to speak. He's a clumsy goose. He is a clumsy goose. He he does all sorts of weird things. Silly yeah. goose. And so so now he's thinking, okay, now he can't fly, so he's gonna have to walk to where he's you know mig or migrating to, and he mm -hmm. goes, wow, you know I need to have somebody with me, so that if there's a predator involved trying to chase me that all I have to do is be faster than that other person so that I can get away and I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> you so don't goes, have to be faster than the monster. You only have to be faster than your slower friends. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so he goes back, finds the two ducks and says, I'll tell you what, we're going to go ahead and migrate together. And so off they go, you know, uh, and so... Mm -hmm. uh, and so so basically he's just doing this because he doesn't want to get caught with some predator trying to chase him because he knows that with these two right. ducklings that he'll be able to um you know fly away or well run away because he can't fly anymore um, right and, and faster, be than their little, faster than their little faster than their little feet allowed them to walk yeah yeah absolutely so the very next scene you end up seeing the cat who got ate by a fish okay mm -hmm. Ate, eaten, anyway. Yes. <laughs> uh, by a fish ends up coming out of the water and spitting uh, fish bones out onto the shore. Whoa! Because this he is ate a the fish. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? A he got ate and then cat. ate the fish from the inside out. <laughs> right. <laughs> that that is an amazing aspect, right? So, right. so the cat ends up. Uh, uh, say, saying, okay, he knows and remembers who it was that, that uh, got him into that situation. So so he's going to go ahead and try to find the, the the goose, you know, Peng. Right. So basically, the rest of the movie is basically this cat chasing after Peng, who has <laughs> got two ducks in tow with him while they're walking, trying to uh, 
you know, trying to get to, well, the migration spot for the geese because, right. you know, Peng doesn't really care about the ducklings. He just cares about himself. Right. But, um, but in the process of this movie, you know, Peng realizes several things. Uh, he, he's obviously made a couple of friends out of these ducks and uh, he ends up, uh, you know, uh, helping them and uh, he ends up finding a, his place and all this stuff. But, but I'm going to let the rest of the furs out there watch this movie because I don't want to reveal the, the meat of the story, so to speak. But right. that's pretty much uh, the start of this movie. And, and it's really a cute story, you know, because there is one part of the story where they actually say duck, duck, goose. <laughs> Which is nice. Ma- which always makes me laugh when they use the name of something in a movie, you know? Right. And so, uh, but I, I, I would have to say the music is kind of awesome. Um, the whole cinematography is pretty good. Um, I, I will give this like three and a half chirps <laughs> because it, it really That's held fun. my attention and, and it was pretty awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. So, all awesome. you furs, go out and see Duck, Duck, Goose on Netflix because it, it's a really cool movie, so to speak. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for the movie review. And yeah. I do have something for, for next time if anybody's oh, curious. Oh, yes. I, I yeah, nearly yeah. forgot. What's for next no, time? No, no. Uh, well, there's this one movie on Hulu that's streaming. And it is called Acorns. Of course, it's Acorns with an A period, C period, O period, R period, N period, S period. Okay. I love a good acronym. Yeah, Operation Crackdown. And so uh, it it looks kind of fun, and um, that'll be next time. Cool. So normally, about this time, Tabin would be doing story time with us. But since Tabin's not here, I hear you have a little story for us. I do i i i have a a um a soft spot for um <clears throat> cheetahs no and no yeah you would have never guessed i know right <laughs> the one time i got to do story time it was about a raccoon so awesome. i get you i get you i know where you're coming from yeah so 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 this is actually a a book that is called i love being a cheetah and it's written cool. by by Mary Mim. So first off, it it says in the very beginning, it says in the very beginning, dedicated to amazing cheetahs everywhere and all those who love them. Aw. Yeah, yeah, it's a sweet book. It's a sweet book. Okay. So so the very first uh, picture is, of course, a cheetah lying in a tree. Um, And it says, I am a cheetah. I live in Africa. Across the vast savanna, I survey everything wild and African that happens each day. My body's long and lean. My legs are strong and sleek. My elegant tail trails long behind to balance me for speed. You see, no animal runs faster than me. I feel the wind and sniff the air I watch for movement everywhere. Scents flow through my furry face. Whiskers keen, whiskers keen to each animal's trace. And of course they show an impala and a blessed bach and a spring bach and a thompson gazelle and a grant's gazelle. Um, Anyway, uh, hidden by my spotted hair, silent, padding in tall waving grass slinking down down close to the ground as impala and springbok unknowingly pass i leap and fast zigzag faster i run stretching my body long to match their dashing rhythm i chase only what i need i am part of the great circle of life in harmony with other beings My sound is very small, a mix of chirp and squeak. Yep. I I clean my face and paws and purr contentedly. Do you have a favorite kitty? So before you come to, so before you come to Africa, make a magic wish to see the fastest mammal on earth, a wild African cheetah. The end. Yes. Nice. 
So and I, I, I actually got to hear a cheetah purr once. Did you? Yes, I was. I went to the exotic feline breeding compound, oh. and there was yes, there was a a beautiful cheetah there at the time I went, and they were just kind of chilling and purring, and you could hear them purring. It was really cool. They're very loud. They are. Well, they're purrs. Well, as you know, I mean, they're, not their chirps. Their chirps are pretty quiet unless they're really, really um, aggravated. Right. Well, as you but, know, uh, I volunteer at the Oregon Zoo, and mm -hmm. uh, before before COVID happened, um, of course, after COVID, it, everything went. Anyway, yeah. Um, I I used to help volunteer with um, with the keepers in Africa to help with the cheetahs and the African nice. wild dogs and. Uh, the painted dogs and the lions and 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 I got to see firsthand the cheetahs and you know they they do chirp and they do purr mm -hmm. but the one thing that they really like doing the most is when when you say hi to them first thing in the morning is is they look at you and then they go <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> so so yeah they, they they can be little assholes but you know mm -hmm. they're 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 i learned also when because i worked at the alamo dome for several years and ringling brothers mm -hmm. uh, at the time was still touring with live animals mm -hmm. and when they bring the when like so it was every other year they would bring the big cats mm -hmm. and i learned very quickly that uh you stay away from the back of the big cats cages because they they will mark and they can yeah. mark a very long way. If you've ever seen a house cat mark, uh, just yes. think of that scaled up to the size of, of yeah. a big cat. And yeah, they yeah. they mark so far away. One of our one of our uh, workers got hit once <laughs> by not paying I, attention. I almost got hit by our male lion at the zoo. His name's Zawadi, yeah. and he turned around. The, the good thing is I was paying attention. He turned around, and and it's like if I was not paying attention, I would have gotten sprayed oh, yeah. um, almost yeah. in the face, to be honest. But um, yeah. thank God I was paying attention. Our, our, our poor, uh, our poor uh, worker, got he got it all just right in the front. I just covered him it was it, he was just oh oh it was just bad yeah <laughs> he, well he said lion, he, it took days to get the smell of it out of his nose uh, i was gonna say lion lion urine is kind of potent yes yes <laughs> oh my goodness yes good times <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for all you furs out there that are into lion urine no i'm sorry <laughs> no <laughs> no nobody teasing. is <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I think it's time we play a little bit of trivia. Oh, trivia. I, I think I'm almost good at that. When I was a kid, nobody would play Trivial Pursuit with me. So I ended up reading all the, car the cards and answers. So I kind of get that too. Okay. Here's an entertainment one. Okay. Willie Nelson named his guitar Trigger after a famous what? <laughs> uh, this sounds like something that Tabin would say, so I'm going to say a gun, but I know that's not the answer that I want to nope, say. Nope, not. But, think, um, but think it's a Roy horse. Rogers. Because, yes, yeah, right. it's a horse because um, Trigger was uh, Roy Rogers' horse. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, uh, Elton John has a song about Roy Rogers and he talks about Trigger in that song. So, yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. OK, let's see. Oh, here's a good one. What kind of animal is the title character of the 2003 movie Finding Nemo? Oh, it is a clownfish. You are correct. And yeah. unbeknownst to a lot of people. If they were much bigger, there would not be scuba divers True. because they are hyper aggressive about their little home areas. Yes. They will actually come out and attack you. Of course, they're so, so tiny they can't do much damage, but they will actually come out and attack you when you're if you get too close to their little anemone. Well, uh, clownfish they're... are also interesting because clownfish. Okay, I got to think about this. I think they're all female and they're usually or no wait, they're all male and they they if the yeah. female dies so. then one of them turns into a female to take over the spot of yeah i do believe they're fish. hermaphroditic in, in yeah. some way i i 
I, all I know is they're aggressive little boogers. They're cute, but they they're are. aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will also say that that some clownfish are very interesting. Um, m- my husband has uh, a big gigantic fish tank, and we oh, ha- nice. were cleaning it one day really good, and they actually can breathe out of water for a long period of time. Huh. Who knew? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't until it happened and they were out of the water for three hours and we put him back in the tank and oh it's like goodness. he was still alive. <laughs> I oh know, right? My goodness. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So which Australian animal has unique fingerprints? Uh I want to say it's the koala. You are correct, sir. Give the cheetah a cookie. You are very correct. Hey, I, I know my animals. What can I say? <laughs> you do. I should probably pick ones that aren't animal related ones. Let's see. There you go. Okay. In which film did Donna Summer make her debut as an aspiring disco singer? Uh, oh, Lord. Um, shoot. I should know this movie. Of course, the only movie that I can think of of the, the name of is Mahogany, but that was Diana Ross. Um, mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Wow. I know I heard this movie, but I can't think of the name. There is an acronym that everybody says at the last work day of the week. Oh, my God. You're kidding me. Is it TGIF? Thank God it's Friday? The movie is Thank God it's Friday, yes. Oh, my God. I did not know that was her movie debut, to be honest. I thought it had something to do with uh, mm-hmm. one of her, her disco songs. Okay, let's see. Let's do a general question and then one more. How many squares are there on a standard Scrabble board? Uh, that's a good question. I think it's 125. Ooh, you're off by 100. It's 225. Oh, I knew that, to be honest. But yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, our, you know. last, our last question. Sure. Over its seven-season run, how many episodes of the TV show 30 Rock were aired? Wow. Okay. I can figure this out because I'm going to say I'm a bad fur because I never watched it. I didn't either. <laughs> I've seen like <laughs> little clips of it. But let's see. If there were seven seasons mm-hmm. and each season had probably 24 episodes, that would be uh, seven times 24. And if I was Tabin, I'd be able to do this in a second. But mm-hmm. let's see. No, um, simple math is not his gig. Oh, oh, well, then good. I, I feel almost more superior right now. Then um, let's see. <laughs> so, 20, 24, tw- tw- 24, that's 28. And 20 is uh, seven is 104. So that's 168 episodes. Ooh, you would be very close. That's 138 episodes because they they did specify aired, not how many were. Oh, made. oh, okay. So, yeah, a well, lot of yeah. times, a lot of times, episodes don't get aired for either reasons of oh. you know, there's a sport ball game on that that ran over time, and so the the episode gets canceled from its live airing, and it only ends up oh. getting you know, a showing later. Uh, So yeah, a lot of times that happens. I worked at a television station, so uh, I've seen that happen more times than I care to. I hate baseball because of it, uh, (laughs) because anytime MLB was playing on Fox, I was stuck at the station waiting until it was over so that they could do the news so that then I could go home. Wow. So that's, yes. Yeah. It wasn't fun. Not my favorite, not my favorite thing, Uh, especially if they went extra innings. If well, I was always innings, mad. I was just screwed. <laughs> I, I was always mad because you know uh, when I was a kid um, on Sunday nights it was my my night to watch um, watch things like uh, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom and oh the yes, Show, I used to watch you know? that. yes, both yeah, of those were that, favorites of mine. Yeah, and unfortunately, because of uh, sporting events of various kinds, they would get preempted. And so it would always make me mad. So, oh yeah. Hence why I don't like yeah. sports to this day, but that's a different. Yeah. Story. I'm not a big sports ball fan. And I worked at the Alamo dome for seven years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, it didn't grow on you. No, I, hate, I, I still hate football. <laughs> I, I hate marching bands now because of the Alamo dome, you know, drum corps international and bands of America would come and do their finals there. And you've, you've never lived until you've heard, you know, 14 hours straight of marching band music. And 
<laughs> that almost sounds torturous. It, it was very torturous. And and I'm, you know, I have to be there the whole time because my screens were on. So it was no. bad. But anyways, um, this is the part where we do shameless plugs. So oh. I'm going to do our shameless plugs for, for our, all of our podcasts. We have oh. four now on the Injured Nerves Productions Network. Uh, we have wow. uh, our newest one is my Doctor Who podcast, which is Three Do Who. Me, Barely, and my best friend James from England do a monthly Doctor Who podcast. It's also our very first video podcast. So oh. kind of do recommend you go watch it on YouTube, and and um, but we are posting it in audio format as well. Then we also have Royal Highness, which is a podcast with Barely and his, well, Barely's not on it. Barely just produces it. But it's a podcast with his sister and her friend where they uh, partake of some devil's lettuce and then watch Ooh. episodes of Game of Thrones because th neither of them has seen Game of Thrones. And so, hence, Royal Highness. <laughs> that sounds like a, uh, a high time. Yes. High, high times and misdemeanors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, also have, we also have Off Leash, which is a not safe for work podcast about pup play and uh, we have my twitch stream which is friday nights this friday night which is not going to help any of you because this doesn't air for another two weeks but this friday night i'll be doing my set from anw last week in addition to some more stuff so i'm gonna do my set oh. first from anw and then play some more music afterwards awesome yeah it should be fun i i you know, figured people who didn't get to go could listen to this to the set we also have uh taven has a fourth wall which he has not put anything up on yet because he's a pup and he needs help mm -hmm. and he, we keep forgetting every time i go over to his puppy den to help him put it up on fourth wall but he will have what, a fourth what, wall soon what is fourth wall fourth wall is a merch store where you can like put your logos on all kinds of different uh, merchandise, like aprons and cups and coffee mugs and tumblers and, and uh, t-shirts and, and all just all manner of different things. If you can put your logo on it, fourth wall seems to have something you can put your logo on for you. Awesome. So yeah, subscribe to the show, support us through coffee or Patreon. We have merch at fourth wall bonfire and Redbubble. And of course, you can share us and give us a rating on Apple Podcasts. And uh, yeah. Chitaro, guess what? What's that? What's that? We we did it. I mean, who needs that pup and the bear? I mean, we do. Please right? come back, Barely and Taven. We, I yes. beg of you, please come back. We love you, Barely and Taven. We really do. <laughs> Uh, thanks to all our listeners for putting us in your ear holes. You can reach us at barelyforecasting at gmail.com via the BFFT chat on Telegram or on our blue sky, at, which is at forecasting.bsky.social. And that's all I have. I'd like you to remember to be kind to yourself and each other. Move our fluff and who and I end. Chitaro, any final words of wisdom for our audience? Well, for, for all you furs out there that saw me at A&W, um, feel free to hit me up on Telegram um, uh, at Chitaro underscore Felis underscore Caddis. Um, you know, um, I would love to chat with you and stuff like that. But uh, uh, for that, I, 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 I don't have anything else other than that. And uh, Mubark Fluff to everyone out there. Excellent. We'll see you furs next week. Absolutely. See you guys next time. Barely Furcasting is an Injured Nerves studio production and is found on all major podcast platforms or can be heard directly at barelyfurcasting.com. The opinions expressed here are those of the hosts and the guests, and no commercial compensation was granted. The Furcast is produced, recorded, and directed by Barely Normal, a.k.a. Mike Began, and is edited by Barely Normal and co-producer Rain Raccoon. This week's episode was produced, recorded, and edited by Rain Raccoon. Opening and closing theme music as well as some interstitial music was created for Injured Nerves Productions for the use on the podcast by our music associate Reg Day with Damian Tanuki. If you would like to hear more music by Reg Day, you can search for Tweezer Beak on Bandcamp or Hoop Loop Tunes on SoundCloud. 
Other interstitial and background music by Shane Ivers through SilvermanSound.com, Gator Tots on SoundCloud.com, and the YouTube Free Use Library. Social media presence is maintained by Ziggy the Meme Weasel. You can send us a message via email at barelyfurcasting at gmail.com or on our Telegram chat at BFFT chat, on Twitter, on our Facebook page, or on the barelyfurcasting.com webpage. The show is supported through subscriptions on barelyfurcasting.com, donations at ko-fi.com forward slash barelyfurcasting, or through Patreon at patreon.com barelyfurcasting. Thanks for listening. We hope you come back and listen next week.